Hello, I'm Scruffy, and today I finally get to talk about a game that has changed my perception of what video games can do, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The first time I played it, I was enthralled by how much there was to explore, how new approaches to combat and puzzles emerged from the game's married physics and chemistry engines, and how beautiful and creative the music and sound design got. There's so much detail and so much charm to this big world that many players have cherished over the past two years, but there are still more minute details that elude more players because they're not trying to stand out. And those are what I'd like to demonstrate today, specifically in the music mixing and sound effects of the game. They're called Invisible Design. Crafting a world to explore involves being very specific about what stands out in the world. If a mountain range stands out, it gives you an interesting destination to aim for. Meanwhile, minuscule things like running toward that mountain range don't stand out. Once you understand the controls, running on the ground remains pretty consistent and only imparts new information if the terrain happens to change. This is why it's called invisible. Your mind attunes to it and comes to expect less and less from its pattern, and so spends less attention on it until it's taken for granted. This is where developers can hide secret details that even subliminally get us more enriched in this game. If you don't mind noticing them, I'm going to show you a couple invisibly designed sounds, starting with things that were outright suggested in behind the scenes videos from the development team, and then getting to less noticeable things until the last item, something that, if you've noticed already, you're entitled to a sound mixing nerd spirit orb. Oh, and also, not really any big spoilers in this video, but I recommend you've at least seen most of this area of the map, and that you know what a Lionel is. Sound director Hajime Wakai states in the official video series about making Breath of the Wild that meticulous care was put into footstep sounds, since you'd hear them all the time while playing as Link. Well, that's an understatement. There are hundreds of sounds surrounding Link, from several footfalls per the many types of terrain and based on what type of footwear you have, to the sounds of grabbing and holding items and weapons, to the sounds of weapons, bows, and shields rustling on your back. Those backpacking sounds are something I'd like to touch on, because if you change your level of stealth, which is quantitative in this game, the volume of those sounds will go down. In full stealth armor, your weapons and footsteps make much less noise, but they didn't just turn down the default sounds of metal weaponry and wooden bows clanking. No, they actually re-recorded themselves handling weapons more quietly. If you don full stealth armor, this detail probably isn't so invisible, but these sounds do tell a story that Link isn't just being quieter in this state, he's also being more cautious. There are also plenty of sounds revolving around the aforementioned chemistry engine in the game. There are sounds for different objects falling in water based on their shape and weight. Including Link. There are different sounds for a brush fire, a torch or weapon on fire, a fire arrow, and even for the sound of a launched fire arrow submerging in water. You really only need one sound to convey fire effectively every time, but differentiating different types of fires subtly gives you more information about how one fire offers different uses than others. Now, let's talk about some invisible design in the music of the game. Hajime Wakai mentions in the same video that in each major village in the game, the village's theme has a day version and a night version that seamlessly blend into each other. The two usually have differing tempos, so the transition between them involves composing a new bridging section of music with accelerating or decelerating tempo. And unlike earlier games, you can't do that by programming MIDI tempo, there are real performers involved as well, so you need to compose that bridge precisely. Now here's the playback system. If you travel toward or warp into a specific perimeter around a village, the village's theme will start from an intro, and the volume will fade in or out depending on your proximity. If you stay long enough for morning or dusk, you'll hear a seamless transition pieced in to switch between versions. The transition only happens at one point in the song, so it doesn't occur right when morning or dusk passes, but whenever the song is ready after that. And even if you leave town and hear this all fade out, this system won't reset as long as you don't leave the perimeter or get interrupted with another musical cue. When you do leave the perimeter of a village, you're likely to hear this familiar piece of music. This field music has more invisible design to it than it seems. It's all on piano, and it always starts the same. But the high piano samples and the low piano samples are two different tracks that each play at slightly randomized intervals. 
The order of piano samples is usually pretty predictable, but playback of the low and high parts can desynchronize, causing unique combinations each time you hear it. And at even further randomized intervals, you might get a reverse piano note. As long as this theme plays long enough uninterrupted. Of course, it's hard to explore for too long without encountering the combat theme, which plays when there are enemies engaging you. This actually starts in and cycles between one of three possible keys, equidistant from each other, along with an extended, elaborated, more intense version in three possible keys for tougher enemies. The theme puts together many different gestures at odd rhythms into one soup of texture, almost like a minimalist piece. But it changes this texture often enough to be engaging, as well as introducing some more invisible design in particular percussion and piano sounds. See, there are some of these sounds that only play at the moment you land a hit on an enemy. Well, not the exact moment. They play on the next appropriate beat in the music after you land a hit. And there are tiers of sounds based on how hard you hit, with three possible keys of piano gestures. Here they are in action during a fight. Perhaps I've made them a little less invisible. Finally, there's one more bit of invisible design I'd like to show you. This is the one that will earn you your sound mixing spirit orb. When you go to the summits of snowy mountains in the game, you usually hear a particular piece of calming, hopeful music on piano and some sort of aerophone. Well, try heading to the summit of one of the larger mountains in the game, like Mount Laneru in the southeast, once the summit is safe to climb. From there, you should experience this musical theme in the midst of snowy weather. But about one weather cycle per full day, the weather changes to clear, and something ever so slight, but to me, magical, happens in that moment. I invite you to clear your mind, relax, and listen closely to the music as the weather changes. Did you notice something change about the music as the weather changed? Feel free to listen back again. The key here is that when you're in snowy weather, that summit music is put through a high-pass filter. The low sounds are cut out, or attenuated, leaving only the higher sounds. This brings out the lower sounds of the icy wind, it keeps the wind and music from clashing, and it almost gives this encased-in-ice quality to the music itself. But during this tiny moment when the weather changes to clear, the high-pass filter ebbs away, letting the full sound of the piano wash over. It's beautiful. And it doesn't happen with the usual cold weather theme around the rest of the mountains. To my knowledge, this only happens with the summit theme in cold weather, as it's one of the only other themes you can hear in cold weather. So, this is almost less than invisible sound design. It's something even more secretive that requires an active search. But I'm so thankful that it's there. Something about being rewarded with the richness of the piano in this theme makes it absolutely worth searching for. And I realize that searching for all of these details goes against their invisible nature. They're supposed to be seamless with playing the game and not distract from it. Well, I consider Breath of the Wild just as much a work of art and a learning experience as a game. There's a lot to be gleaned from this game, even in the tiniest choices of how to mix in sound and music. And once you get stably used to the game, you can focus in and discover these technical details just like discovering new Korok seeds or little locations on the map. With that, another kudos to Davogato for the game footage in this video. I'm Scruffy, and thank you very much for watching.